everyone welcome back to my youtube channel trouble free in today's video i'm going to explain you about dynamic programming in the subject of design and analysis of algorithm this video is just the general method like how in general dynamic programming works i'll explain you with an example so in the next coming videos we will be learning about the applications of dynamic programming okay so for this video we are just going to see the general method okay so if you have not subscribed to my channel yet consider subscribing uh, if you are enjoying my content so far so let's get into the video now first in dynamic program what we will do is we will break the given problem into number of sub problems okay the same thing which we do in divide and conquer but here we will solve each and every problem separately the same in divide and conquer also but here what we are doing is we are storing these solutions for future use so that if this part of the sub if this part of a sub problem is needed again you can use it directly in your algorithm or in your problem okay so you are solving each of the sub problem and the solution of each and every sub problem is stored for future use in future if you want at any time you can directly use that solution of the sub part instead of doing it again and again okay and this is a optimization method okay and here in dynamic programming in most of the applications we will be using the concept of recursion okay you know what is recursion right you will take a single function and you will call it again and again okay like single function once you will define it but when you whenever you want the function you can directly call the function suppose you defined as function sum sum and you are defining like what sum is doing it is adding two numbers so this is what you have defined then next time when you call sum you need not define all this if a is is equal to 0 b is equal to 0 a plus b assign a plus b to c all those steps you need not call again and again J you just call the function sum and it is done okay so that is recursion so here also we are using the concept of recursion the same right you are finding solution once but you are repeating repeatedly using those solutions okay next now let us try to understand this with an example you all know what is Fibonacci series, right? You start with 0 and then 1, one 0 plus 1 will give you 1, 1 plus 1 will give you 2, 2 plus 1 will give you 3, 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 3, 8, like this. You'll be adding previous two terms in order to get the next term. Okay, that is Fibonacci series. See, if n value is equal to 1, that is Fib, and fib of 0 is directly 0 all the time. Fib of 1 is directly 1 all the time. If the value of n is greater than 1 then you have to use this function fib of n minus 2 plus fib of n minus 1 if the value of n is greater than 1 okay look at the function here the same algorithm also same int fib of n if n is less than or equal to n you will return n directly that is if n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1 you can return n directly otherwise you have to do fib of n plus 2 plus fib of n minus 1 sorry n minus 2 plus n minus 1 I'll tell you with an example don't worry see let us uh, do the example here so for example you want to find out the fib of 5 okay you want to find out fib of 5 so if n is greater than 1 what is the formula fib of n minus 2 plus fib of n minus 1 right so fib of n minus 2 plus fib of n minus 1 so how can you break 5 into fib of n minus 2 means 5 minus 2 3 and n minus 1 means 4 5 minus 4 again how can you break 3 as n minus 2 means 1 3 minus 2 is 1 right so fib of 1 and fib of 2 how can you break this one as fib of n minus 2 is 2 and n minus 1 is 3 okay now do you know the value of fib of 1 yes if n is equal to 1 it is 1 so here you can directly write 1 but do you know the value of fib of 2 no so you have to further break it fib of n minus 2 that is 2 minus 2 so fib of 0 and fib of 2 minus 1 which is 1 so fib of 2 you don't know the same again fib of 0 fib of 1 here fib of 3 you know you don't know so you have to further break it that is n minus 1 is fib of 2 
and fib of 1 okay now see do you know the value of fib of 0 yes 0 so you're writing the 0 you know value of fib of 1 yes fib of 0 is 0 fib of 1 is 1 fib of 2 you don't know again so fib of 2 minus 2 is 0 and fib of 1 so fib of 1 is 1 here 0 and here it is 1 so now start adding the values you add these two then you will get 0 plus 1 which is equal to 2 this is already 1 1 plus 2 you will get 3 here okay 0 plus 1 is 1 so is equal to 1 again 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 1 here it is already 1 so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and 1 plus 2 is equal to no we did a mistake I guess somewhere ah. 0 plus 1 is 1 only so 1 plus 1 is just 2 okay so 1 plus 2 is you will get 3 here so 2 plus 3 you will get as 5 here okay when n is equal to 5 the fib of 5 is also equal to 5 this is the function here see how many times you call the fib function 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 15 times you call the fib function okay that means you are calling it for so many times let us see if there is any way to reduce the number of times we are calling the fib function here the dynamic programming comes into the picture so here let us take an array 0 1 2 3 4 5 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay initially consider all the values as 0 okay 0 or x or anything you can consider initially consider all the values as 0 okay now you know fib of 5 no you don't know so just break it fib of 5 is 0 no instead of zeros let us take it as x no confusion will be there okay do you know the value of fib of 5 it is x still you don't know so you have to break it fib of 3 fib of 4 you got do you know fib of 3 no fib of 4 you don't know see in the in from the array you don't know right they are still x so you are still breaking it into fib of 1 and fib of 2 so what is the value of fib of 1 you know that if n is equal to 1 it is 1 so now update this with 1 okay next fib of 2 value you don't know it is x so still break it fib of 0 you know that it is equal to 0 if n is equal to 0 then fib of 0 will also fib of n will be 0 so here you have 0 now okay now you know fib of 1 already so you need not call this function again you know it already from the array right you need not call it again now come to this side fib of 4 you don't know that's why you have split it fib of 2 do you know fib of 2 you know from here so 0 plus 1 you do you will get 1 okay fib of 2 you already know from here see i'll tell you again don't get confused here we are breaking it because we don't know the value of fib of 5 here we don't know the value of fib of 3 so we broke it here we already know the value of fib of 1 you wrote it directly 2 you don't know so you break it what is the value of fib of 0 it is 0 you already know that so you have written 0 fib of 1 you already know from the array okay next you are adding these both you are getting the value of fib of 2 so what is fib of 2 it is 1 you know 1 and 1 if you add 1 plus 1 what you are getting you are getting 2 here that means you know the value of fib of 3 also how much 2 okay now move to this side fib of 4 you know you don't know that's why you are breaking it into fib of 2 and fib of 3 you know the value of fib of 2 yes it is already equal to 1 so you need not call this again okay you are cancelling it out you know the value of fib of 3 yes you already know it from here right so you need not calculate this part also again you can remove that part as well so now see what is going to be the value of fib of 3 fib of 4 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3 so here you got 3 so now what is the value of fib of 5 from this array 2 plus 3 which is equal to 5 okay so now what is this array initially we have everything unknown now it is 0 1 1 2 3 5 Fibonacci series okay so now check how many times did you call the fib function now 1 2 3 4 5 6 all these are cancelled out right because you already know those values so now you have called it only for 6 times for the first time it was 15 times 
but that 15 got reduced to 6 now why because you are storing these values in a array that is what I told you dynamic programming is right you are storing the solutions of the sub problems in an array okay so now let us see what are the applications optimal binary search trees 0 by 1 knapsack problem all pair shortest path problem traveling salesperson problem and reliability design so i'll be explaining about each of these things in the next coming videos that's all for this video thanks for watching the video till the end if you're still having any doubts let me know in the comment section so let's meet up soon in the next coming video with another topic